Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, Hassan Joho, the former Mombasa governor jetted in the country from the United States of America. And while making his uh, maiden speech, he actually said that he's been unstable health-wise and that is what has made him not being fit to be part of Azimula Umoja activities while swearing allegiance to Raila Molo Dinga. That came and uh, him pointing out that he will be led, he will be ready to lead the Mombasa Azimio chapter, especially uh, immediately he will regain his full strength. Hassan Joho was a staunch Azimio campaign machinery alongside Junet Mohammed, but they took a backseat when Raila missed the presidency, with quite a number of them taking a punch, a punch from critics of not handling Raila Odinga's um, presidential bid well, something that still believe to date that it was above the men that we complain about. Saturday, not Saturday, Friday Nation. On page 14 is a story I want us to look at. Court reprieve for Joho family in warehouse lease fight with KPL. Hassan Joho, linked company, is having a fight, is at the center of um, a fight with the KPA over a list document that UDA administration wants to review and actually to terminate, even though it is a document that was legally binding and it was done last year. I want us to look at that because uh, we will then draw political interpretations from it. On June 30th, Kenya Ports Authority granted a lease to in 100 and 100,000 square feet shed to a company known as Portside. Portside is a company linked by Hassan Yehov's family, uh, brother Abu. And it was according to that lease document, that lease agreement, uh, the Portside was supposed to build uh, some warehouses. Mm -hmm. Now, this deal between Portside and uh, the KPA was to last for 20 years. It was damned, it was actually signed by the former KPA MD. Remember, the current MD is the one that was appointed by William Ruto, some gentleman also known as uh, having a name bearing Ruto, um, second name as Ruto. According to that agreement, any dispute arising from the deal had to be resolved within 21 days through arbitration. But now something happened. On 3rd March 2023, remember the deal was signed last year, June, 30th June, but now 3rd March this year, when the company, the Joho linked company were already going on with the construction of warehouse, KP wrote a letter to the company asking them to or ordering them to stop the warehouse construction for 30 days so that they will give time for the lease document to be subjected to sort of some review. Now, remember, this was to, to stall the operations for 30 days and then there seems to be backtracking on that lease document. Now, Portside wrote a letter to KPA about the arbitration and even availed their person. Remember, according to the agreement, this should be solved by arbitration. But since they told the Yoho's linked company to stop the construction of their house, the state has maintained their silence over the matter and efforts by the Yoho linked company to reach out to the state are futile since they are not responding. Now the court has then given an injunction against that order that came from KPA. And according to it, 
if they are to terminate that contract, the leasing, uh, the lease contract, they're supposed to be given three months written notice. Now, this warehouse, and you need to get this, the warehouse that this port side company is to construct was exclusively handling tea cargo and they would actually partner or rather lease these spaces to private tea handlers. It is deeper than you can imagine. It borders political intimidation, but then not something new because we knew that it is true that the Mombasa port was at the center of the last year's general election and immediately Ruto was sworn in at, um, in Kasarane. One of the first orders he made, which we looked at it as a populistic move, was to revert the port operations to Mombasa. It was a dummy paper thing, but never effected on ground. You can do your own research and you'll find out that it has never been effected on ground. And apart and after that, the KPA which falls under the docket of uh, Kipchumba Burukomen, under Uhuru Kenyatta, the port KPA was under treasury. But when William Ruto came into power, the transport sector was given, the transport minister was handed to Kipchumba Murkomen, and then the ports, Kenya Ports Authority was then reverted back to transport. But then that's where it was before even Uhuru Kenyatta took it to Treasury. You need to get it. was in the Ministry of Transport. Uhuru Kenyatta took it to Treasury, a minister, uh, I think, maybe to micromanage. And after that, when Ruto came, it was taken back to transport, where now Kipchumba Murkomen is the man in it. So there have been a lot of discussion because even an attempt by the county government to impose a levy there so that the county would benefit was actually thwarted by the national government. And the AG said that the taxes, the collection is only through the national government policy. Now, what is happening? It is not a coincidence that the company is linked to Hassan Joho. Remember, he's a man that swore his allegiance to Roy Lodinga. I understand that the corridors that he might be making political comeback, perhaps seeking a senatorial uh, seat in Mombasa in 2027 general election, and he's still going to be there. There are three, uh, there are four observations coming from this move and why looking like Joho is being sought after. I think the new MD, the new KPMD, must try best, and I don't know how this is going to be possible, to free himself from the national, national political interests getting pursued in the port. Oh, I can tell you, port politics is one of the most delicate, and it's been going on there for quite a while, yeah, you will actually realize that uh, when you read, I've been really been following and doing critical analysis on the port politics. It's so deep. What is going on here? It looks like the current administration is really in conformity and effecting orders from a higher office. And maybe that is the danger part of it. It's because Joho might be here and push to falter. It could be a political push. It could be a behind the scene political push to make him falter and change his political allegiance from Maria Lodinga to UDA. And I can tell you, if Hassan Joho is to come up today, make a press briefing and cross over from Maria Lodinga camp to join William Ruto, then probably that will be the end of it. We know that those who sit politically right, political correctness is something that the administration takes seriously. And because this is a company that is linked to Hassan Joho, you cannot underestimate the fact that uh, he had an input, rather it was a point of influence because he was a governor by then and was very close to President William Ruto. 
then this would mean he is the person being targeted here to change his allegiance. I remember last year we did a story about there was a, another contract that was to be terminated or rather to be changed. The state wanted to backtrack. And the same, such still geo linked company got a deal with the South Sudan. And the South Sudan uh, administration said they either work with the Yoho company or they stop working from Mombasa port and change so that they go to Djibouti port. And the state had no option but to work <laughs> to allow the Sudan administration work with the Yoho company. There is a grabbing culture being seen here. And we've always been saying some of the policies that are being led, some of the policies that are being affected are simply to grab. Because be it as it may, there could be other reasons behind it. Um, if, if the list document is there, the construction is still going on. It is not even, even is when they are building the warehouse. So the warehouse has not even started operations. But then it is being cancelled or rather it is being reviewed. What do you expect? Maybe review will be in terms of years, maybe two years or 20 years are too long. But then it will also look like some other people also have interests. And they're saying, maybe we have to look at it. Lastly, I could tie this to the tea sector politics. Uh, the warehouses that are in question here were supposed to be used, and uh, I need to get that. But I need to get that part clearly. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now, court documents indicate that warehouses are to handle tea cargo. KPA consented that Portside is free to sublease the warehouses to private tea cargo handlers. However, this would be after consulting each other. You never know. Maybe someone wants to export tea and because these are meant for that, they want to take over so that they don't get a sublease from port side. What do you believe? For me, I see the Joho uh, some terror being inflicted on Joho because of political allegiance. That's my take. Let's meet in the next.